Did you know that Britain has more than 250 species of native bee? All of these play an essential role in your garden by pollinating flowers. But these bees are becoming scarce with fewer wildflowers and suitable nest sites and an increase in pesticide use. Now around 25% of our native bees are listed as endangered species. Out of those 250 native bees, over 90% of them are solitary. By solitary, I mean that a single female emerges from her pupae and is mated by a male. Then she constructs and provisions a nest and lays an egg in each cell in that nest, all by herself. This is very different from social bees like the bumblebee, the honeybee and stingless bees, all of which have a queen who lays eggs and a number of workers who look after them for her. Female solitary bees prepare their own nest in the ground, in cracks or crevices, in walls or in wood. They gather nectar and pollen as food for their own offspring and they provide little or no further care after their eggs are laid. Solitary bees come in many different sizes, colours and shapes. Common solitary bees are mason bees, minor bees, sweat bees, wool carding bees and carpenter bees. They vary in colour from basic black to bright metallic green blue or red. Some solitary bees superficially resemble wasps. There are too many solitary bees to name and talk about each one individually so we will only feature a few of them. I will also tell you how you can help them survive. Let's begin with the leaf cutter and mason bees which are collectively called megachylids. Leafcutter bees nest in soft, rotted wood, thick-stemmed, pithy plants such as roses and in similar materials that the bees can easily cut through and excavate. Nest tunnels may extend 5 to 10 centimetres deep and coarse sawdust is thrown out at the entrance. After the nest has been produced, leafcutter bees collect fragments of leaves to construct individual nest cells. The bees cut leaves in a very distinctive manner, making a smooth semicircular cut several centimetres in diameter from the edge of leaves. These are carried back to the nest and used to fashion nest cells within the previously constructed tunnels. Each leaf-lined cell is then provisioned with a mixture of nectar and pollen. An egg is laid and the cell is sealed, producing a finished nest cell that somewhat resembles a cigar end. A series of closely packed cells are produced in sequence so that a finished nest tunnel may contain a dozen or more cells forming a tube 10 to 20 centimetres long. The young bees develop and remain within the cells emerging the next season. Leafcutter bees differ from related species in that they collect pollen on their abdomens rather than on their hind legs. Masonry bees are much like leafcutter bees, preferring south-facing nest sites and using naturally occurring holes in either bricks or in the mortar joints between the bricks. They especially like soft mortar, which has got a high lime or sand content. Masonry bee nests are established in spring or summer and contain 6 to 12 eggs. Each egg is put in a cell provisioned with pollen and nectar and sealed, usually with mud. New adults emerge the following year to repeat the cycle. Nesting burrows are excavated or enlarged by the use of the bee's jaws.
The tawny mining bee, Andrina fova, is one of several species commonly seen around gardens in early spring, which dig nest burrows in lawns and similar places. This bee is about the same size as a honeybee, but covered by fairly dense golden hairs. The female bee makes a small volcano-like mound with the soil excavated from the nest. There may be many nests close together, giving the impression of communal life, but really each female is working alone. Nesting activity lasts only a short time, perhaps two to three weeks, after which the small mounds of earth around each nest entrance soon disappear with no permanent damage to the lawn. Take care not to confuse solitary bee nest mounds with the mounds of earth caused by the nesting activity of ant colonies. Solitary bee mounds have a single large entrance hole in the middle and by watching for a short while on a warm sunny day you will see the bees coming in and going out to collect pollen. If left alone these bees will often nest in the same area year after year and provide an annual service by pollinating your early flowering fruit trees and shrubs apples, pears, currants and gooseberries and other garden plants so helping you to ensure good crops later in the year. Wool carder bee females use their hairs from plants to line their burrows use their mandibles to card the fibres into cell walls and are quite choosy about the flowers that they will visit for pollen and nectar. The best flowers to plant to attract the wall carder bee is the well-known garden plant lamb's ear. Also foxgloves and purple toad flax work very well. Wall carders also like woundworts and mints. Minor bees are one of many familiar black and yellow summertime bees, often mistaken for bumblebees. Unlike bumblebees, minor bees are solitary. They do not collect honey and nor do they sting, although they could bite if handled roughly. They are good pollinators and serve an increasingly important role as honeybee populations decline. You can actually help to enhance minor bee populations by providing dried mud blocks for them to nest in. In England, you probably won't see any carpenter bees the size that this man saw in Mexico. He says, When as me and I were close to the bottom of the canyon near Chavrelo, I spotted a big insect. It looked like an oversized bee with beautiful blue metallic wings. Later I learned that it was indeed a bee, a carpenter bee. The insect was very docile, and I had no problem at all with getting it on my hand. The photo gives a good impression of the size of this carpenter bee. In England, they look more like this. Carpenter bees are the most common species in the genus Xylocopa which resemble bumblebees except that these carpenter bees have a relatively smooth abdomen and bumblebees have very hairy abdomens. Can you work out which is which? The carpenter is on the left, the bumble on the right. Carpenters dig holes in dead wood where they lay eggs and provision them with nectar and pollen. Carpenter bees are sometimes considered pests because they will bore holes in wooden sheds, porches and other structures, but they rarely do any serious damage. Common carpenter bees are about 25 mm long, but some species are smaller and have black or metallic coloration. Like the leaf cutter and mason bee, adult carpenter bees spend the winter in nests constructed the previous year and become active in April or May. After mating, females excavate new nesting tunnels or use pre-existing ones. Nesting tunnels are about 
12 millimetres wide and start on the end of wooden beams or at right angles to a surface. They penetrate the timber for about 10 to 25 millimetres before turning and following the wood grain. Tunnels are clean cut and may extend 15 to 20 centimetres into the wood. Most bumblebees are not solitary. They live with others, so we do not describe them here. However, there are six species of cuckoo bumblebees. Cuckoo bees do not build their own nests. Like the cuckoo birds, these bees lay their eggs in other bees' nests. It is thought that the cuckoo females locate their host's nest by smell. She may go right in and sting the existing queen to death, then lay her eggs. Or she may sneak in the nest and hide for a few days until she smells the same as the nest and then lay her eggs. The workers then rear these eggs as if they were their own sisters and brothers. Cuckoo bumblebees usually have the same pattern of hair colour as the bumblebees' nests that they lay in. But cuckoos are slightly less hairy than ordinary bumblebees and have a much harder body. Neither do they exude wax, so there are no weak points between their abdominal segments. If there is a fight between a cuckoo and another worker or queen, it is almost impossible for them to force their sting into the cuckoo's body. Finding nest sites has become crucially important for our bee population. You can give them a helping hand, improve pollination in your garden and give your family a lot of pleasure. So how do you build a nest for solitary bees? Well, any type of cavity is likely to prove attractive to solitary bees. Try putting up old, dry, hollow stems of plants such as bramble. You can also use bamboo canes or even drinking straws. The holes inside need to be between 5 and 10 millimetres in diameter. Tie them into a bundle and fasten them horizontally to a tree or post about one and a half metres off the ground and facing south. They must be horizontal or sloping gently down so that their open ends are at the bottom. This will stop the rain getting in. Or you could put them into a little wooden bee house. If you can't find any canes with holes the right size, another way to do it is to use a block of untreated softwood, such as a section of dead tree. Do not use any timber that has been treated with chemicals. Get an adult to help you drill lots of holes into it, each 15 centimetres deep, and with diameters varying from about 5 to 10 millimetres. Do not drill all the way through. Once again, stand or hang the wood up so that the holes are horizontal and the rain cannot get in. This video was produced by the Save Our Bees campaign run by the British Science Association during National Science and Engineering Week 2009. We would like to thank Murray Beekeepers for their help in making this video. Images used in this video are copyright by the people shown here. We would like to thank them all for their help.